Cacao Gerdo took a deep breath. The human trader was slowly walking down the street, greeting other sentients left and right, even when the imposing biped towered over them. Feeling his heart racing, Cacao Gerdo stepped out from his little shop. Fellow trader, I wonder if I can impose on your time. The human paused. Bright eyes behind a pair of slightly opaque lenses took the young Glipthit in briefly before the lower half of the human face opened in a wide smile. Kakagero started the shudder, then relaxed. The smile, he recalled, was a sign of human happiness. Young Kakagero, isn't it? Dealer in, uh, used electronics and information. Mostly information, yes. What can I do for you today? Kakagero looked up, trying to make his mouth mimic the human expression. He was sure he had not talked to this human before, yet his name was known. Part of the mystery he hoped to unravel. Fellow trader, I seek. Understanding. Call me Josh, Kakal. Can I call you Kakal? Walk with me around the market and we'll talk. Part of Kakal Gero's mind wanted to say no. His name was part of him, but, but the human seemed so genuine, so friendly. Clearly no insult was meant. Kakal Gero turned and quickly locked up his little shop, then hurried up to the human's side. The human started walking again, at an easy, slow pace. Fellow friend Josh, I'm trying to understand why humans can travel so easily. How humans are welcomed everywhere. How can you trade with all size in the conflict? The human looked at him. The soft skin around the corners of the human's eyes crinkling slightly as the human made an odd haha <laughs> sound. Cacao, you know the answer. Humans are welcome everywhere because humans are friends with everyone. We've never started any wars. We never haggle over prices. We never deliver less than we promise. We are, in short, peaceful. And yet you are deaf isn't carnivores. What is known of human pre ethio history is dominated by strife. Humanity breaks the meld, fellow tra- Friend, Josh. The humans seemed to consider what Kakao Gedo had said, as a path seemed to open in front of them in the busy street. It is no secret that- The human was interrupted by a Yuke's youngling darting after a ball in front of them. Chuckling, the human caught the chart and raised it in the air, tossing it up slightly and cashing it gently again. Careful there, young Sook. Yes, Sook, offspring of Cottonor. Running into the street can be dangerous. The human lowered the youngling onto the street again. Your brew mother probably worries over you, Soak. You should go home. One day you'll be a mighty warrior, but today is not that day. The young Yooks stared up at the human, mouths agape, then turned and scurried away, disappearing in the throng. Ah, kids. As I was saying, Kakao, there is no secret that humanity has a checkered past. But can we not improve? Must we always be monsters? Kakao Gero considered what the human has said in silence, as the pair slowly walked through the business district. Friend Josh, how come you know the youngling's name? Knowing the name of traders, I can understand, but... The human smiled and gently tapped the side of the lenses covering his eyes. Some free information for you to trade, Kakao. Human smart glasses are tied to the hyperweb. Because it is useful to learn the names of new friends, the wares the city needs, the social mores of friendly species, or what a fellow trader can offer. Kakao Gerdo found his head dipping forward, mimicking the human body language for agreement. So you found the information on the hyperweb, but... Frank Kakao. A youngling listens when a stranger knows his name, just like a trader listens when a stranger offers a good deal. Kakao Gerdo thought hard for a heartbeat. It are the deals, are it not? You're welcome everywhere because humans always offer good deals? Humans never ask for more than you can afford, Kakao. Most of the time, you can't afford not to take up a human offer. The human paused for a second, accepting a gift of fruit from a vendor in one of the many small stalls. Humanity offers friendship and the opportunity to prosper to everyone, Frank Kakao, and luckily for humanity, most other races are eager to accept. Kakao Gerdo walked in silence as the human ate the fruit, other vendors casting silent glances at the one who had offered the gift. Frank Kakao, it is in everyone's interest to be welcoming to humans. It is in everyone's interest to trade with us. It is in everyone's interest to keep the peace. The human stopped and smiled at Kakao Gero again. Looking around, Kakao Gero realised they had come back to his little shop. Kakao Gero, remember when I said humans never started a war? That we never haggle? That we never deliver less than promised? Yes, and it is true, but... Kakao Gero, humans like being peaceful. So we end wars without the negotiations about terms and conditions. And when we end wars, we always deliver a final end to hostilities. Do you understand? Kakao Gero thought hard, then mimicked a human nod again. He shrank slightly as he turned to unlock his little shop again. 
The human peered into the semi-darkness of the little business. Nice little shop you've got here, friend Kakal. Would be a shame if something were to happen to it. 